Act one, scene two of Romeo and Juliet. We're in No Fear Shakespeare on page 43. We have Capulet who enters with the County Paris, followed by his servant Peter. The County Paris is a, a relative of the Prince of Verona, so he is, um, you know, royalty. He is um, someone that is very sought after as, um, you know, someone to, to marry. The, so the Capulet, who is Juliet's dad, remember, and Paris have already been having this conversation, and, and the scene kind of begins with this continuance of the conversation. But Montague has sworn an oath just like I have, and he's under the same penalty. I don't think it will be hard for men as old as we do are to keep the peace. You both have an honorable reputation, and, and it's it's too bad you've been enemies for so long. But what do you say to my request? I can only repeat what I've said before. My daughter is still very young. She's not even 14 years old. Let's wait Two more summers before we start thinking she's ready to get married. Girls younger than she often marry and become happy mothers. So right off, we see what Paris's request is. He's wanting to marry Juliet. And um, I'm, I want to mention, though, that uh, we, we see Juliet's age for the first time. She's not even 14 yet. She's almost 14, though. Um, but we can infer from Paris's answer that uh, where he says she's, um, women, girls younger than her marry and become mothers. Now, and during this time in the 1500s and even up until, you know, the 1800s, there was no such thing as being a teenager. You went directly from being a child and when you hit puberty and you were old enough to have children, that's what you were expected to do. Get married, get out of your parents' house, get a job if you're a boy, and, you know, live your own life. It wasn't actually until in the 1950s, 40s and 50s, that a teenager even was a thing. Um, so this wasn't absurd to get married so young. In fact, if you were... 17 or 18, especially for a female, if you were this old and you ha were not married yet, something people would think something was wrong with you. She's unmarriable. Why does no one want to marry her? Why hasn't she been gotten married yet? So this was not um, anything out of the ordinary. Capulet says, girls who marry so young grow up so s too soon. But go ahead and charm her, gentle Paris. Make her love you. My permission is only part of her decision. If she agrees to marry you, my blessings and fair words will confirm her choice. Tonight I'm having a feast that we've celebrated for many years. I've invited many of my closest friends, and I'd like to welcome you and add you to the guest list. At my humble house tonight, you can expect to see dazzling stars that walk on the ground and light the sky from the below. So, um, Capulet is inviting Paris to this feast, this party that they're having, and he's saying, you know what? If Juliet loves you, if you make her fall in love with you and she wants to marry you, then you have my permission. He goes on to say, you'll be delighted by young women as Fresh as spring flowers, look at anyone you like and choose whatever woman seems best to you. Once you see a lot of girls, you might not think my daughter the best anymore. Come along with me. Capulet turns to his servant Peter and says, Go, little fellow, walk along, all around Verona. Find the people on this list and tell them, them, tell them that they are welcome at my house tonight. Capulet and Paris exit. Peter goes, you know, he's walking on his merry way by himself. He says, find the people whose names are on this list. It is written that Sh Shoemaker and Taylor should pay with each other, play with each other's tools, that fishermen should play with paints and painters should play with fishing nets. But I've been sent to find people whose names are written on this list and I can't read. I'll never find them on the, my own. I've got to find somebody who knows how to read to help me. Here come some people, right in the nick of time. 
So this would have been hilariously funny to the lower class that would have been watching this play because, you know, no one, well, I'm not going to say no one, most people in the lower class would not have been able to read. And Capulet's so caught up with, with this Paris wanting to marry his daughter that he's not even really thinking about the fact that this poor servant can't read and can't go to these people's houses when he doesn't even know whose names are written there. And um, so the, the lower class would have thought this would have been hilariously funny. He's comparing um, Capulet asking him to read the names as a um, fisherman painting a scene and a painter uh, fishing with nets. It's just not what you do if this is your, you know, it's not the same. Benvolio and Romeo enter. He says to Romeo, come on, man, you can't put on the fire by starting another, put on one fire by starting another, A new pain will make you, make the one you already have seem less. If you make yourself dizzy, you can cure yourself by spinning back around in the opposite direction. A new grief will put the old one out of your mind. Make yourself lovesick by gazing at some new girl and your old Sickness will be cured. So Benvolio is telling Romeo, like, hey, you know, guy, come on. There's plenty of other girls out there. As soon as you find someone else, you'll be over this girl just as, like, you know, pretty quick. Romeo says, the Plation leaf is excellent for that. For what, Romeo? For when you cut your shin. What? Romeo, are you crazy? I'm not crazy, but I'm tied up tighter than a mental patient in a straight jacket. I'm locked in a prison and deprived of food. I'm whipped and tortured. He looks and sees Peter says, Good evening, good fellow. May God give you a good evening. Excuse me, sir. Do you know how to read? I can read my own fortune and misery. Perhaps you've learned from life and not from books. But please tell me, can you read anything you see? Yes, if I know the language and letters. Well, that's an honest answer, Peter says. Have a nice day. Stay, fellow, I can read. So Romeo, you know, he's just kind of been teasing him, uh, more or less. He's reading off the name, Senor Martino and his wife and daughters, Count Anselme and his beautiful sister, Virtuvio's widow, Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine. My uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline and Livia. So he's naming out all these names that uh, Peter needs to go to to invite to the party. Signor Valentino and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and lovely Helena. That's a nice group of people. Where are they supposed to come? Up. Where? To supper? To our house. Whose house? My master's house. Indeed, I should have asked you before who he was. Now I'll tell you, you don't have to ask my master's, the great and rich Capulet. And if you don't belong to the house of Montague, please come and drink a cup of wine. Have a nice day. And Peter exits. So, Romeo is a little intrigued by this party. He's seen a name there um, that he, you know, he likes. Benvolio says to Romeo, Ah, oh, the beautiful Ro Rosaline, whom you love so much, will be at Capulet's traditional feast, along with every beautiful woman in Verona. Go there and compare her objectively to some other girls. I'll show you. The woman who you think is as beautiful as a swan is going to look as ugly as a crow to you. So we find out, finally, who Romeo is in love with, and he is in love with Rosaline. Benvolio says, I think we should go and crash this party. And once you see Rosaline compared to other girls, you're not going to think she's as pretty as you do now. 
And it's as if my eyes ever lie to me like that. Let my tears turn into flames and burn them f for being such obvious liars. A woman more beautiful than the one I love? The sun itself has never seen anyone as beautiful since the world began. Sermia is like, nah, dude. She's the hottest. Benvelia says, come on. You first decided she was beautiful when no one else was around. There was no one to compare her to except herself. But letting your eyes compare her to another beautiful woman, he'll show you at this feast, and you won't think that she's the best anymore. I'll go with you, not because I think you'll show me anything better, but so I can see the woman I love, and they both exit into the scene. <laughs>